Hey guys, Thomas DGM here, and this is a Unity Q&A, so question and answer, basically. I've got so much comments asking about, like, tons of things, and the only way I can explain it is show it to you guys, so... Abdullah Shabir asks, I have no environment package. Okay, so, every Unity comes with an environment package, and you can go find it by going into Assets, Import Package, and environment it's right here if it's not here you can also find it on the asset store by typing in unity environment package Handan I Hassett if I said that right um, he says my terrain is glossy for some reason why is that okay so I don't really understand what do you mean by saying glossy uh, it's shiny because if I look into uh, my scene right now the skybox that I'm using is making the terrain look glossy if I go into game it's got that wide effect but if you're building a scene it's not going to be visible anyway in the game however also the other thing that you probably meant uh, which again I don't really know uh, if you go into paint tech uh, paint texture uh, select your texture um, the smoothness one is the original and then the normal map if I add one I don't really have one here but for example small wave now as you can see it's really got that glow um, so it depends uh, for which map you will use um, you know it adds the shadow effect so I would download some from the asset store which are like original grass um, maps but it's up to you uh, the DJ Shinks asks uh, can you make a video where you show how to make a barrier okay so it depends what barrier you want. I mean, I've got an original barrier here which is made out of a cube and in order to do that you go game object, 3D object, cube and when you have the cube you position it wherever you want uh, in the scene. One second, let me just move around. Um, so for example I will have it floating up here. Well, I mean you want a barrier so let's put it down and then we're going to use this tool here to just expand it to the way you want it to be and it's white and if we play the game uh, with a controller we can see the cube is here and we won't be able to walk unless we jump through it and we've got exactly the same cubes that I've created here um, and yeah, you, you, can, you cannot walk through them, you can't, it won't let you uh, however if you want to make a barrier which is invisible all you have to do is uncheck uh, the mesh renderer on the cube and as you can see it's already invisible so if you want to make like if you have at the end of a map and you want to make a barrier so your guy doesn't go there or something, I don't know. You simply select the thing you want and then just untick mesh renderer. So when you play the game, you can't see where it is but it won't let you go there. As you can see I'm trying to walk forward and he's just not going to let you go. Um, yeah, and you can do that to any, any object you want in the game as soon as you have mesh renderer off. Also, Box Collider is important because if that is not checked or your object doesn't have Box Collider, you will be able to walk through the wall. So, as you can see, I unchecked it. Now, if I go through, as you can see, I can easily walk through the wall. So, make sure Box Collider is checked and is not set on trigger because if it's on trigger, it will still walk through it because it will act as a trigger. Okay. Mr. Golden Pork Chop asks, "What do you use for modeling? I use Cinema 4D R14, as you can see. Um, it's a great program to um, animate and model and stuff. I'm not really good at modeling myself, but I know how to do simple stuff. Uh, it does cost money if you want it, so I, I don't know. It's up to you if you want to get it, but you can do some amazing, cool stuff with this program. Uh, uh, as I said, not only animations but also pictures. This is a motion graphic." Um, mainly used for motion graphics but you can do amazing stuff on this as you can see yourself um, I was working on on a thing here but yeah uh, Abdullah Shabir asks again uh, can I get these sounds mp3 and I really like your tutorial for horror game right so uh, most of the sounds used in my game are created by me on FL Studio including the main game um, song so unfortunately I don't really want to give that out because it's you know it's for my for my game only make your game uh, personal, make it your own, so have different sounds. However, then he said, "Can you share um, some horror sound links?" Uh, yeah, I'll I'll uh, leave some links in the description for uh, one of the websites that is pretty good. Uh, 
can't remember the name out of uh, from my head, but I will send. I will leave a link in the description, and also you can use YouTube. Uh, just type in some uh, I don't know a door sound, and then YouTube's MP3 or go and Google and Google stuff. You know you've got the internet to search for everything you want. Uh, again, we have a comment from the same person saying uh, how to remove grass. Okay, that's pretty simple. So let's have a look. Uh, let's go into terrain uh, inspector. So. Paint details are basically supposed to be used for terrain, so add, add grass texture. Um, let's select uh, the original grass by Unity, add. So we have, as you can see, I'm making grass right now. Let's just add the brush size. Uh, yep, so I'm making grass. If you, if you have too much, like, oh my god, what the hell, press shift and hold it on your keyboard. And as you hold shift, uh, and left click obviously it removes it Re uh, yeah it's pretty simple uh, Jacob Heyman says dude I'm using unity 5.5 personal and there is no animation tab right I have my animation tab on the bottom here however if I had to add that myself if you, if you do not have it down there you go to window and animation and when you press on that uh, it'll appear and then you can just drag it wherever you want um, OB Cham Arzuto I don't know how to say that uh, but basically he says, uh, can you make a tutorial how to optimize games for low-end PCs? I will appreciate that, help me so much. Okay, so, well there is no way to actually optimize your game for low-end PCs, but there are a few things you should, you should take care of. Firstly, when using textures, make sure the texture is as low pixel quality as possible, that will obviously be easier for the computer to render. Uh, the game will not look the best, but it's for low-end PCs, right? Uh, make sure you don't use as much lights or real-time reflections and all that stuff. Make sure it's turned off. Uh, what Unity can help you with if is uh, if you go if you go edit and then uh, project settings and find quality. As you can see, you can go to fastest and as you can see, it already removes shadows and everything um, makes it makes it go fast. But that's that's all that Unity can really help you with. The rest you have to build by yourself. Make sure everything's low quality. Um, especially when you write code, make sure it's nice and clean and as short as possible, not complicated, so the computer can, you know, skim through it really fast. It does make a difference. Um, yeah, that's really all I can I can think of to make it good for low end PCs. The Broad Gamer says, "How do I resize my menu canvas to 1920 by 1080p? So basically full HD. So what you do, you have to make sure in your game uh, you have 16.9 ratio selected, which is full HD." and of course maximize on play and now if you don't change anything and we press play you will see that you get something like this it, it will be probably really buggy and look weird so you have to make sure in your canvas uh, the image which is the top image here as you can see the rect transform I will put it on to resize this way so it's on top and it will be resizing left and right then image 1 which is the one on the right side here I will keep it on the right size, there's no need to resize it. And then all the buttons, oh yeah, this text should be on top, and then all the buttons should just be on the right on the right side. So now if we press play, it should, there you go, as you can see it looks fine. So no matter how big your screen is, it will always be in this position. Okay, Joshua Phillip asks, uh, wait, so why did you change the height of the terrain to 80? Also, whenever I play the game, my FPS controller falls straight through the map. Okay, now I had that problem as well. Firstly, I changed the terrain to 80 because of a few reasons. So if you would like to add water to this or any type of underground thing, you can't. Because if I press on the terrain and if I press shift, it does not go down. So let me, let me, you see, if I, if I move it up and then press shift, it will go down. But this is as low as it gets. So, uh, yeah. And secondly, your FPS controller. So let's go FPS controller. Basically, you have to ensure that the FPS is higher than the actual terrain, and make sure that the terrain it's on, or a cube or something, has terrain collider or box collider on it, and it's checked, and it's not on trigger. Okay. Okay. This is the last question I will do, and this one has been sent to me on uh, my Facebook page, and it says. How can I animate 3D object cube, replace canvas to fading black, if using to move this, that? Right, I didn't quite understand that, but what I think he means is, how can you make a transition between two scenes so it fades 
to the dark and then it fades back basically yeah so i'll show you how to do that okay so in order to show you this i had to go into the unexpected which you all know the game that we've worked on um while doing my tutorial so what i've done here is i have a panel as you can see and the panel is not visible if i go on 100 percent, you can see it's all black but it's not visible and i've simply did a little animation over here so after 45 seconds well 36 seconds which is where my animation intro animation finishes as you can see i've simply animated the color which is the a which is the transparency to go full black and then at the end of this i have a, a code that we've wrote which is the scene change after 45 seconds it simply goes into the other scene and how scene change works is as you can see, when the time reaches zero, we've got application.load level, and I input the name of the next um, scene, what it's called basically, and I've called it intro scene two because if I go into my scenes, you've got intro scene two, and it will load that up. So if we just watch what happens. The Best the Hits Radio. Radio. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Best Hits Radio. It's 1 a.m. at night, a bit of fog tonight, and next up we have Lost Frequencies. Are you with me, Remix? So I'm going to make it for this morning. Some things came up. Can you make it for the evening? Yeah, sure. No problem, man. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Hey. So as you can see over here, um, the scene fades black, and then you have the text, obviously. And in a few seconds, it will change the scene, just like that. So at the beginning of scene two, you could have an animation of the black uh, panel just fading out instead of fading in. That's how, that's how, I'll, that's how I swap between the ch scene changes. Now there are other ways to do it, and it requires a lot of coding. And I, I'm not a professional, so I don't really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. 